Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. We are continuing with our interview series on CSS and this is part two of the top 50 interview question and answers on CSS. If you have not checked out our previous episodes on CSS tutorial and interview question and answers, I request you to kindly do so. During the course of the tutorial, if you have any doubts, any, any queries, please drop them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help you for free. Let's get started. So the first question that is asked in this series is, which property is used to control the position on the background for an image? So if you want to control the background position, we'll use the property background position for controlling the position of the image in the background. The next question is, how do you write a conditional statement in CSS? Can you give me an example? So they want to understand how uh, your understanding of how to write uh, conditional statements. So let's get let's check it out. So to write that condition, if you see, I have written a condition where if i is equal to eight, then apply this style. So we can write that specific queries and if else condition uh, in order to check uh, if it's a specific browser. In this case, if it is i eight. And then we will end it up with end if. So to write condition statement, we will write if ie8 and then followed by end if. The next question is, what is the name of the property which is used for making font oblique in CSS? So to make any font oblique, we can write the attribute font hyphen style property. Can you list out the media types in CSS? So there are multiple uh, media types in CSS, some of which are all, screen, print, projection, embossed, TTY, and TV. So these are the different media types which are available in CSS that we can use. List all the font attributes in CSS. What are the different types of font attributes? Like what all different things you can do in, with font? We can use font family, we can use font variant, we can use caption, we can use font style, we have font size and icon. So these are the different attributes related to font we can use in our styling. How can we eliminate the color border around the linked images in web page and CSS? So if you see when you put an image by default, a blue color uh, border would appear in your app, in your images. So to remove that, we will use the code border hyphen none. That is border colon none in your CSS code. List out the elements of CSS box model. So what is box model? It's nothing but a rectangular, uh, anything that you do with rectangle boxes. And for that, it requires border, margin, padding, and finally content. So using these four uh, properties, we can design the box model in CSS. What is the use of Z index in CSS? So Z index is used to avoid the overlapping of the elements. By default, the value of Z index is zero and it will take positive and negative values as well. So if you want to position something one over other element, we can use Z index minus one. How to lighten the font weight in CSS? So if you want to lighten the font weight, we'll use the property called font hyphen weight attribute. So when you use this font property, it will lighten the font weight. Which property in CSS is used to, for setting the type of cursor? So to set a cursor type, we'll use the property cursor and then we can use cursor high colon pointer or how do you want that? arrow etc so by we have to use the property cursor list out five properties of cursors in css so it's an indirect question uh, of asking what are the different types of cursors you have worked with so we can mention there is pointer there is help there is weight there is hand and there is crosshair list some of the properties that are added in css3 so some of the new properties that were added in CSS3 are border images, 
new web fonts, multi column layout, box shadows, text shadows, and transform property. So these are some of the new uh, properties that got added in CSS3. So make sure you know this list very well. This is definitely going to be one of the questions they will ask you in your interview. What is the difference between inline and block elements in CSS? So block elements will leave a space before and after the element. It will use full width that is 100%. That some of the examples of block elements are div, h1 tag, h2 tag, all the heading tags. Whereas inline elements only require the width that is occupied by the content size. For example, our link or a span element. So this is a yet another very, very important question that is often asked. So make sure you have gone through it very, really well. Can you list down some of the main properties of CSS style sheets? So some of the main properties in CSS style sheets are text, font, border, padding, table, list, background, margin. So these are some of the um, mainly used or I would say uh, frequently used properties on CSS style sheets. Now, this is yet another question that is often asked in CSS interviews, which is what is the difference between display none and visibility hidden? So whenever we write something like display none, this will just hide the element in the page, but it will not and does not take any space of the element. Whereas visibility hidden, it will hide the element, but also it will take the elements space. So remember, if you are hiding something, it will be just hidden, but the space is definitely occupied when you write visibility hidden. That's why we always prefer to use display none in most cases. All right, so upcoming up next is part three. This is part two. I hope you like it so far. I hope you are learning also and gaining valuable information. Please do subscribe to my channel to keep supporting and encouraging me. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and I will see you in the next episode, which is CSS interview question and answers part three. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next episode.